Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And in the previous video um, published by me, you saw how to use COBOL to do systems programming. And when, when I say show how to do systems programming, of course I only show the basics. Uh, real gurus uh, will do very, very advanced stuff. And also the one big difference between a real, uh, a real experienced uh, systems programmer and the stuff that I show is that the systems programmer will not only access uh, tables within the operating system and read and report fields from within the operating system, but also be able to modify stuff to create new features or to improve certain things or to change uh, behavior. Uh, but what we, what we did with COBOL is show that how easy it is to access system information. And obviously all these videos are only here to show you how to get the very basics done, how it works in principle, and then the creativity of uh, all you folks out there is going to um, enable you to do whatever you want. And obviously, there is extensive documentation out there um, on the internet as well as on the IBM website. Um, and so, but these are these are videos that just help you to get started. Now, I have signed up for IBM's master the mainframe. Um, uh, challenge and I think I'm going to pass the challenge but I have I only did the first two or three steps so far but it's uh, it's interesting because this is an ZOS 2.2 uh, .2 system I believe I think this is what it means and um, and the good thing is that I can work from here um, uh, or I can also work from um, from the command line from the Unix services command line and so what I'm what I want to do um, uh, today is create a C program but run it and compile it and produce the output uh, from the uh, shell in the Unix system services prompt I connected here with a uh, with an SSH as you can see here uh, this is an SSH connection to IBM's uh, server uh, this is my user here and um, and so we're gonna guess we're gonna start working on uh, on on writing a small utility that will report. Um, uh, and today we're gonna do it in C. And I guess I forgot to mention the main part. Whereas the last time we used COBOL, today we're gonna use the IBM C compiler. They call it the IBM Metal C compiler. Uh, you invoke it with a C89. Um, and uh, and write the utility to report on. Some information uh, coming out from uh, from the system. Um, we'll see what kind of information we're going to get. I have some ideas, but let's. Uh, and so, because the VI editor here is a little old-fashioned, there's no Vim here. Um, it could be compiled, but I'm not going to go through the effort here to compile Vim to for the purpose of this video. Instead, I'm going to just use my um, my trusty uh, Notepad here as the editor. And then when we're done, I'm just going to copy it over to the to the mainframe. By the way, this is a real mainframe. It's not running on any kind of emulation. This is a real Z. Uh, let me see. Uh, if I can find out what kind of mainframe that is. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know how to access the 02827. I guess that's a Z14, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we'll, we'll find out, but it's not really that important. Um, so I'm going to be writing the program here, and um, and then um, we're going to transfer it over so that we have a better editor, and we also have syntax highlighting, which we don't have with the old-fashioned VI editor on the mainframe. Let me make it this C language. Um, can we zoom in? Yes. Oh, that's good so we can make this bigger so it's easier for all of you to follow okay this should work fine for now alrighty so let's get started oh and by the way what I'm gonna do here because it may be a little bit too boring for me to type it's you know I don't think it's gonna be more than 30 40 lines but I'm gonna do what I've done in the previous videos which is um, record it and then uh, run it at an accelerated pace uh, with with uh, some music in the background. So uh, it's a little bit more interesting to uh, watch me program this. So here we go.
Okay, so uh, we got it this far. Let's see what the damage here is. Let me first uh, try to compile this the normal way. What do we call it? IPLC. Oh, okay. IPLC. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's right. Um, let's try this again. So you can see there is also no bash-like um, navigation within previous commands and or complete. It's a very simple um, shell. I think it's a, we're working with, yeah, with the normal shell. Uh, nothing special. Uh, I don't know if there is a seashell or anything to try now. I mean, it's pretty. The USS in uh, ZOS is pretty, pretty simple. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, what was it? IPL.c. Hmm, IPL.c. 17 and 24. be a problem. Character. And 24. Uh, sorry folks, I had a phone call I had to attend to. Um, so I think we're saying 17 and 24 are no good. So let's check what's wrong with 17 okay so yeah that's why there was a problem and then it said uh 24 undeclared but that may be because we had we hadn't declared this properly so let's just try this again um object file not created 24 I didn't IPL arm oh <laughs> okay IPL IPL parm okay IPL IPL parm well, let's try this again yeah so this went fine there is an obvious uh, uh, string null termination issue here but that's uh, that's so true I'm not gonna go into it uh, let's see what other thing we can do so I was researching the um, compiler manual and I saw an interesting feature which is I can produce a high-level assembler code uh, which is maybe gonna help me to find this little problem we still have left um, so we do like this xlc minus s q metal and then ipl.c and this will generate high level assembler output ooh what is this hmm. nope xlc minus S, and then let's do IPL. Let's see, the invocation of commands on the USS is sometimes slow because it actually in yeah, the, the start of an address space can can be quite slow. In value because option metal is not specified. So let's just do IPL. Let's see. Let's see what happens this time. So you can see the launching of. Okay, so now. Nothing really happened. Um, XLC minus S Q at all. IPL. I don't know why that wouldn't work. Error. Language environment standard C headers cannot be used when manual option is used. Language environment standard. Why can I not? Completion field. 
Language for C header is cannot be used on language environment standard. Okay, so let's try without. Minus S minus Q now IPL dot C probably even worse. Oops. For using well, but if I that's funny. I have to include string dot H. I know, but but um, if I do, then it won't let me. Okay, so let's look at the assembler anyway. It does it did generate an assembler. So. I'm not very experienced with this whole USS thing, but this I can read. Okay, so um, so it does it in uh, A mode 31. So this is addressable in 31 bit, um, and then okay, it. Uh, enters, establishes addressability, and then uh, we have this part of the code. Obviously, pointage, pointer handling is much easier in, um, in assembly, because it's really, uh, it, it's built into assembly. Um, you always deal with addresses. So, well, let's see what happens here. This is a, the copy, string copy. Okay, let's see why this doesn't go too well. Address of string copy. Load address into the length of eight. And then we have the print. Mm. Okay, so um, this should work. Splex. Uh, uh -huh. I didn't even know you could set, uh, get memory and uh, set on a boundary of a virtual memory page. Which is either four kilobyte or kilobytes, or I think for ZOS 2.2 could be one megabyte or even more per page. Uh, but it will, so this could potentially waste a lot of memory because it will put it on a boundary of a page, and if you do another allocation, it will be, it will be another page. And if you have huge pages support enabled, then you're wasting a lot of RAM. But uh, that's just a small detail. Um, I wouldn't do it this way. It's faster because. Um, you don't have um, if you have more than one object then you don't have uh, you can avoid false sharing this way I actually have a patent on this uh, but but uh, for one object it makes no sense anyway a small remark uh, I mean this should work but anyway I mean, it does work but I don't understand the characters at the end but uh, since we have this working now, let's do the next step, which is we, we now we can just assemble it with, uh, what was it, IPL.LS. This will now invoke the assembler. Okay, this is the high level assembler. So assemble IPL.S. And now all we have to do is a linkage editor IPL. Because the file doesn't exist, uh, what is the uh, you invoke it with? Oh, that's a long command. So ld minus o ipl for to make Windows people happy, um, and then we code ipl dot o. Yeah, I can't. It can't do this because we don't have the the uh, includes uh, defined.
but if I define the includes, it will not generate the assembly. So, but uh, it would have worked. We can just, uh, I think I did, I have a small, well, I can do it with a very small program. Uh, test C to show you. Uh, and then we just do int main, and then we do int A, B, C, and then we do uh, A plus B, and C equals A times B, and then we say uh, we'll return C. Okay, so this should now, if I do and Excel minus S minus Q metal. What was it? Test dot C. Yeah, now it doesn't complain because I don't have the includes. And then uh, VI test dot S. Okay, <laughs> very simple program. We have. Now we load the value into register 14 for B. And then we multiply um, and put the result into register 15, and then it, it exits from the program. So, and then uh, the next step will be as test s. Yep, and then ld minus o test test dot o. And now we should be able to execute test. Yes. So um, that's the way, very interesting, that we can generate high level assembly, which can be assembled by uh, uh, HLSM directly. I love this feature. And here you can see titles US v2.2. Um, so that's the operating system we're running under. Very interesting. Um, okay, so we saw that now we can also access um, system tables with C and I think I actually looked and um, we don't have PL1 yet. I'm going to produce an example with PL1 uh, hopefully in the next video. Um, if you had fun watching this video, please press on the thumbs up button. Um, always highly appreciated. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to the Moshix mainframe channel, please do subscribe now. If you've uh, not yet requested your free account uh, for uh, my MVS 3.8 and the cloud offering, where everybody who writes me an email uh, with the true name and the purpose, what they want to do, and the suggested logon ID and the password, I'll create them a password. I create them an account, TSO account, that they can log in from anywhere. Um, and, uh, and so you don't have to have your own MBS up and running 24 um, seven. And, um, and that's about it. So I hope uh, I, I learned uh, quite a few things doing this. It was interesting and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.